going on guys it's brown Superman's comics we are talk about the market trends within the comic book community that's right it's been a while since i've done this but we're trying to bring this video series back there's some great trends that were up and some trends that were down a lot of people talked about it on social media online within this week we're gonna get into it right now starting with that first upward trend we are talking invincible we had the launch of that skybound animated series on Amazon Prime and the reaction for this series has been well received. We got new fans out of Invincible, just like we talked about on this channel. I, I Just a few weeks ago, I had Sean Kirkham, SVP of Skybound Business Development. We talked during that discussion as we could see that animated series of bringing a new audience into Invincible and it sure has. You've seen all over Twitter feeds, people saying, hey, I never read the comic, love the show right now, Amazon seems to be sold out of the hardcovers, the compendiums. Even those are selling for great money on eBay. And we're seeing issues number one and all the other issues of Invincible going for way more money than they were. Just as predicted, animated series kick ass and the comics are, the comics are telling the tale and the price. Next trend I'm gonna talk about this week is this could be up or this could be down depending on how you look at it. But Marvel is switching their distributor strictly from Diamond. They are going to Penguin House as their exclusive distributor. You still can't order from Diamond. Diamond will have them as a wholesale opportunity. Now what's to be said of that is, will that affect the discounts that Diamond gives to their customers now that they're no longer the sole distributor? You can register for your account through Penguin House right now. And they're gonna have the full solicits up in May for October's comics. And that looks like it's gonna be when that full transition takes over, where those October releases will be coming from Penguin. But like I said before, you can still get them from Diamond. I have this in the up because I think it's a great opportunity because we get more distributors. We've talked about it before when we talked about Lunar and during COVID and how we had other distributors in the game. But the great thing about it is maybe, just maybe, we can get some of those shipping practices taken care of where books are just thrown in a box and shipped. And then like the people with the smaller accounts, they don't get the higher priority of customer service as the people with the more expensive accounts. I want to see parity. I want to see good quality control. This gives people another option. Then the last thing we're going to talk about trending upwards this week is NFTs. That's right. Non fungible tokens. I'm sure a lot of people have been seeing information about this hitting online. It's been around since 2017, maybe a little bit longer, but we're seeing a bigger trend rolling into the comic book market. It's been big in collectible market, especially with trading cards or so-called trading cards. Panini's done similar blockchain with their site, but also NBA Top Shot. If you're wondering, hey, what's an NFT? NBA Top Shot is the perfect example of that right now and how blown up that has gotten but recently we've seen art germs starting to sell digital artwork through NFTs. We're seeing Matt Kent bringing back mind management and available to purchase through NFTs. Yes, it is purchased through cryptocurrency, but it's not the same as say Bitcoin or Ethereum. Those are fungible tokens where here we have non-fungible tokens. I'm still relatively new to, and I still have to do a lot of research myself on it, but have to talk about it because a lot of people are talking about it. and. I'm anxious to see where it goes. Could it be the one day where more people are worried about their, their digital ownership than their physical ownership? I don't think it'll happen so much in comics, but maybe in trading cards. Maybe at some point, I don't want to send stuff to PSA. I got a one of one digital, but I think it's also, it's going to be a big bragging rights game. I think there's more to come from it, but I'm also skeptical because this reminds me also of the dot-com craze back in the 90s where, hey, dot-com was big. All these dot-coms grew up, cropped up somewhere. And then next thing you know, a lot of them died off. So me personally, I've stuck my toe in the pool and Tops. Tops is working with Wax.io and they're doing NFTs for Garbage Pail Kids. That's what I've bought so far as I do my research. I am still a complete noob with it, but NFTs are trending and I think they're going to be trending for a while. Which brings me to the downward trends this week. Here's another one that could be down, could be up, depending on how you look at it. But allocation, this isn't something that's just happening recently. A lot of comic book stores, but we're seeing a trend of a lot more popular new release comics. And when you get that, whether you're ordering it online or at your LCS, a lot of comic book stores, 
allocate the amount of copies that you can purchase, whether it's one or two. And personally, I think it's a great idea. It gives the ability for that comic book to get in the hands of more readers. And I'm always about that. Now, I completely understand for those that are into flipping or speculating, early bird gets the worm. Hey, I'm here. You have the copies for sale. Why can't I just buy them? But that's also the reason why you can pre-order, you silly goose. That's right. That's another reason why you can do it before final order cutoff, which is also a reason why I have a complete video that comes out every Friday night for books that are hitting final order cutoff. So pre-order them. That way you can pre-order as many copies as you want. But allocation, yes, some people might see it as a downward trend, but I personally, I understand it. And I also think if you're going to allocate, I think there should be a limit, right? Because you're also, the comic, book, the comic book store is taking the risk. Hey, man, allocate copies. What if people come in and don't buy it? And the buzz of the of the book drops and now they're stuck holding copies. So I say, you know, allocate it, what, Wednesday, new release day, through the first weekend, maybe less, maybe more. And a lot of times my LCS, if they're allocating a copy and I want another one, they will call me like Thursday, Friday, say, hey, if you want to come get another copy, you can come in. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Are you for allocation or are you against allocation? Next on the downward trends, we have DC Universe Infinite app, or you can just call it DC Universe app, whatever it was. That app, I don't know what the heck it was. It started out, was it ever hot? I mean, yes, there were some decent shows on there, some great original programming. I think the highest one was, besides Titans, was Swamp Thing. And of course we saw that get into a bunch of trouble right off the bat. But either way, I think it was just badly executed, badly implemented. Now it seems like you're paying the same price just to read digital comics online and everything that, anchored that app has moved over to HBO Max. Me personally, I would have liked to just seen HBO Max. Put everything on HBO Max. What was, it seemed like the app was rushed. Now we just got digital comics. If that's your thing, that's good. I'm not, I'm not big on that. It's Marvel Unlimited, Comixology, or DC Universe Infinite. But either way, if you're gonna launch an OTT app like they plan to, or I just say over the top app, like they initially planned, they did not keep up with the competition between Netflix, Disney Plus, all these plus apps that launched. DC Universe, left by the wayside, and HBO Max is the way it should have been all along. At the beginning of the video, we talked about how great Invincible is doing, how we got a new fan base. We also saw this week that Thundercats is being picked up for a feature film. But one that's down right now that I think is a perfect buying opportunity is another Disney property right now, and that's Gargoyles. Gargoyles comics are selling for super cheap, and we've heard rumor that Jordan Peele wants to do a live action Gargoyles movie, as well as the creator of Gargoyles. So I think right now that attention's off of it. Those books are super cheap. If you're looking like one of those trends like Thundercats, maybe Invincible, yes, to me, those have a bigger fan base, but I think there's great buying opportunities within those Gargoyle comics, super cheap right now. And lastly, I wanna give a big shout out to Matt and Shannon at Bat City Comics. They sent me this hat, love this hat. If you guys aren't paying attention to Bat City Comics, make sure you follow them on Facebook. They do so much for the comic book community. They do a lot of live streams. They do a lot of events over there. And if you're in Austin, make sure you check them out. I haven't been to Austin, so if I do make it down there, definitely, definitely gonna check out Bat City Comics. And with that being said, see you guys in the next video.